Howdy folks, DJ Smoker back with you. Today, we're gonna be taking you from the farm to the smoker, showing you the process of how beef is processed and that finished product that we all love on the barbecue. Let's go. folks we're back with you we're on a very scenic drive to Dade City Florida just about one hour north of Tampa Bay and what we're trying to do today is we're going out to a beef cattle ranch called Providence Providence Cattle Company and I thought it'd be a good idea to look at the process of cow selection, processing, all the way to the point where you purchase the meat and you put it on the grill. I thought it was interesting. I've never followed this process. And so today we're headed out. The good folks at Providence Cattle Company have allowed us to come and take a sneak peek at that process. And we're gonna bring it to you in a multi-part series so stay with us when we come back we'll be pulling up to the ranch and giving you some footage of some beautiful cows Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, glad you could come out here. Uh, uh, it's beautiful out here. Can, yeah. I, can I stay? Yeah. <laughs> you know, Put a, just give me a little tent, a little tent space out here. You know, you think this is nice. We got they're working at a pasture over uh, on the other side of the knoll there. That uh, I just want to buy a camper and put it there. Oh, because you don't hear anything. You just at night you hear the coyotes. That's about it. Well, we were just saying there's just the peace and tranquility, just to get away from all the, the hustle and bustle and city i say it's city but we're in riverview so well riverview's not too cityish yeah but everybody seems to be coming migrating down that way so it's getting a yeah. little crowded well it, it, and glad to have six years seven years just about yeah yeah something like that and jolene oh there's a long story with jolene but she's <laughs> a fifth generation dairy woman Ooh, and, nice. and uh used to own a dairy down there in uh town and country area and uh I got bored one day and started helping her, and she said it was 18 months. I said it was two years. <laughs> and, uh, I helped her down there, and she eventually sold her dairy and was bored. So she's come out here working with us now, and, and uh, you know, Jolene knows more about animal health than oh. most veterinarians. And a funny story wow. is I had a big animal vet down here in Dave City. You know, Chet Taylor. And I had an issue with a cow one time and I called Chet and I was asking him, he goes, well, did you call Jolene first? <laughs> <laughs> call the expert first, right. right? So Jolene out here is more or less the expert on animal health and behavior. Ooh. Making sure the animals are healthy, making sure uh, the, the, the mama cows are good, the calves are good and all that. Megan, you know, this was a new thing for her when she started a long time ago. But she now knows how to drive every single tractor. She's in charge of maintenance of them. She's in charge of fencing. Um, all the, the more labor part. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, do I have that right? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, so I, I was just telling them, I said, yeah, I come out here a couple times a week and I dust everything up and I leave and leave you guys with the mess. <laughs> so, <laughs> and you guys put it all back together and get it back the way you had it. Well, Jolene just said they just ignore me. So that's, I'm okay with that. <laughs> yeah, all right.
These are our, our young heifers and steers that are going into the Pasture Plus program. Okay. Our grass-fed steers are already down in Yeehaw Junction. Uh, this is the last group of uh, calves, and we just didn't have the time to keep them strictly on grass, so we could easily go into the Pasture Plus program. Our heifers here are replacements for older cows that, you know, maybe struggle given birth and things like that, or their teeth get too big for calves and stuff. We're right. gonna send them to the auction and replace them with some of these females. Here, a heifer, as you know, is a female that has not had a calf. Uh, steers are bulls that are cut, castrated. Okay. Uh, so we have these troughs here, and these troughs are, are actually uh, casket bulbs. Oh. And they're made by a company in Date City. Again, like our feed we get from a family-owned business in Bushnell. These we get from family-owned business in Date City. This is how we do business. Local. And uh, so we're trying to, these are normal feed troughs. And to keep the mamas healthy and have and have enough protein to feed the calves, you got to give them some kind of supplement. So we give them feed. But if we're going to have grass-fed calves, I can't have a trough that low because eventually, after a few months, calves are going to start nibbling into the feed. It's just you know they see the mama doing it and they're going to do it too. Mm -hmm. Well, then I can't call them grass-fed. So we feed the cows out of these because the calves can't get to the bottom. Okay. The mamas can get the grain, the grain sense, but the yeah. calves can't. Okay. So that happened to be the perfect uh, apparatus for that, the height. And the well, rest. we figured it out because we have some water troughs. And this company used to do some water troughs for people. Uh, and these uh, bowls are, are ones that have a deformity or something in it so they can't use it so instead of just crushing it up or doing something like that we buy them and we'll use them for either water or you know we got looking at it like, hey, that's the right distance for the mama to get down there but calf can't mm -hmm. so we have now outfitted every other pasture with these troughs so that we can rotate the herd into a pasture like this even with the calves on them um, well, it, it's, it, I don't know if it's a scientific way, but we don't have a scientific way about it. We just keep track of all of our animals. And like number 153 here, I can tell you who its mama was, who its daddy was, who their mama was, oh, and who okay. their daddy was. And so when 153 goes to harvest, if they come out as prime or high choice, it's like, okay, so this mama and this bull Produced a really good calf. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the bull now, gets a reputation. The bull gets a reputation. You know, we buy our bulls. They're they're registered Angus bulls. We buy them from a fella up in uh, Live Oak, and uh, you know, every other year we'll get a new a new bull because you, you can't have the 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 bull on a daughter. So you'll keep like we'll keep the uh, the heifers away from the older bull and we'll get a, a new bull next year and put that bull on the heifer so you don't have any inbreeding or anything like that but you can when uh, when we send our animals we get everything done up at in Fort McCoy uh, there's a plant up there that does an incredible job for us they they just they make it easy to do what we do uh, but they'll uh, when they harvest the animal they'll grade each carcass mm. so we know that uh, this carcass graded prime this carcass graded choice now have we, if we have one that comes in as select yeah, that's a problem we don't want select we want choice and prime so we'll take a look at that ear tag number figure out who the mama and daddy was and then take a look at that mama's calf from the year before well if that was select that mama's going She's out of there yeah. because it's not the calves we want. Mm. If it was prime, if it was prime or high choice, it's like, all right, well, maybe we'll give her another year. Maybe there was an issue. 
Okay. Uh, so you look for a pattern there. Mm -hmm. uh, the bulls, uh, when we get our bulls, there, there's uh, certain criteria that we look at for them. Uh, since we live an hour away from the ranch, if a, a cow is having trouble calving, we may not know about it till the next morning, which you don't want to do. Because, you know, it's, you don't want a cow to go through that. So uh, the bulls we buy, we make sure that they put out a small calf with a fast growth after that. And we want also the bull to have uh, a history of uh, uh, being able to marble, you know, the calves being able to marble well. So we'll put all those factors in and, and the guy we buy our bulls from, who's also my accountant, uh, we'll say, Joey, I got this bull, I got that bull, and this one for you. Which one you want? So, I'll, and then you look at the, the ratios of, okay, this one's got really good for low calf weight. This is really good, but this one's got a little combination of both. I'll take this one here. Mm -hmm. And that's how we try to improve the genetics every year. It's okay. interesting. Can I touch And then that? what we look for in uh, the summer like this, the cows will come out and they'll graze in the morning when it's cooler and shady and all that and then they'll just hang out under the trees until the weather cools down later on and they'll they come do back it again out and eat again uh, if, if the clouds come over and it rains they'll come back out and they'll eat do they have a, a certain behavior i know animals have that that sixth sense like can you look at them and know that you know it's going to be a thunderstorm if they don't come out, is that is that indicator of some weather or not? You know, I I don't know that for an answer. Uh, growing up, we always looked at the trees, and we could tell a storm was coming just by the way the the leaves on the trees would would look. Okay. Um, I don't know uh, because the the way the wind would blow would turn the the leaves a certain way where it would make them like a like a shiny silver, Ooh. and then you knew that rain was coming. Uh, you know, my friend Dean Wallace or Clifton, they'd be the ones that know more about, or maybe even Jolene, about behavior of the animal. Is that the same thing? I'm thinking no, because we've lost animals to lightning. Uh, if they if they knew it was going to be a bad storm, you'd think that they wouldn't be move. standing out here in the middle of the pasture. Right. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, donkeys protect the calves from coyotes. Yeah. Coyotes are scared to death of donkeys because donkeys will kick them, kick them to death. Uh, so during calving season, uh, the, the donkey is always with the herd to uh, protect it from coyotes. Didn't know that. That's Interesting it. fact. Yeah. And and knowing that those animals, their 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 health, their well-being, their livelihood, until harvest is in, in your hands, uh, I feel it's truly a blessing from God that he's allowed me to do that. Uh, and one of the worst days on a ranch is when you lose an animal because of something you can't control, whether it be lightning or, or uh, we've had a couple get attacked by wild dogs and you have to put them down. And that's a hard day for several reasons. One, it's, it's, a, it's a living being that God's entrusted to you to right to protect right uh, second thing is it, it's an asset that you've spent a lot of money on to get to a certain place to feed God's people yeah mm -hmm. uh, you know and and people sit there and say well God can't be very happy when you're harvesting the animals and say well I'm sure he is because we're feeding his his flock right mm -hmm. by doing that uh, we are trying to cut a deal with uh, feeding Tampa Bay, I don't know if you're familiar mm -hmm. with them, yeah, uh, to donate our coals instead of sending them to the auction. We want to have them processed into ground beef to feed the hungry. And we will donate our time, the animals, uh, if they can pay for the, the packaging, uh, they can then feed people that, that should be eating more protein right they can't afford to eat protein mm -hmm. uh so we'll do it in bricks for for uh, uh for food pantries and then chubs for places like metropolitan ministries and all that mm -hmm. and uh 
you know, this was one of my, my wife's ideas. We sat there one time in the living room talking about how blessed we were. We were. And our pastor always says, make sure you pass those blessings on. Right. So it's like, how do we pass this blessing on? And she came up with the idea is, you know, is there a way to, uh, to feed people that can't afford to go into Whole Foods and pay $10 for a pound of ground beef? because it's local with no antibiotics and things like that. And uh, so it's like, well, let's think about this. Wouldn't you know it today? The Lord works in mysterious ways. Absolutely. A couple of days later, a buddy of mine emailed my wife to see if she wanted to donate to Feeding Tampa Bay. And I said, hey, wait a minute. And you know, he was looking for cash. Dan, thanks for coming out. Thank appreciate you. Thanks for having us. We appreciate it. We look forward to, to working with you moving forward. Absolutely, sir. Look forward to it.